See, this, this could be the intro. <laughs> okay. Right here. Well, you say, hi. <laughs> hey, oh, there you are. <laughs> Welcome um, to... Off the grid. Off our <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. yes, Hi everyone, I'm Will Buxton and this is my producer, Mr. Jason Swales. Hello. Uh, and welcome to the very first edition of Off The Grid. We're going to give you guys a unique look behind the scenes of every Grand Prix venue we visit throughout the whole season. And we're going to start right here in Bahrain at pre-season testing for the 2014 Formula One season. We're awesome. Peace out. That was great. <laughs> Welcome, guys, to the Bahrain International Circuit paddock. Uh, it's a bit quieter today because it's testing going on, so it's not massively full of people as it normally is, but it's not to say there's not a huge amount of work going on in those buildings behind me. They, of course, uh, feature the garages in which all of the cars are kept and are a hive of industry during the Grand Prix weekend itself. And above them, that's where the paddock club is, uh, usually on the Grand Prix weekend, where all the VIPs and uh, celebs, well, you don't get that many celebs here in Bahrain, but anyway, that's where they'd be uh, quaffing their very expensive champagne. But this is the, the workmanlike side of the paddock, and over the other side of the paddock is the unworkmanlike, uh, my dear colleague and friend, Mr. Jason Swales. Quick pan. Or well, here on this side, it's the hospitality area. They have kitchens, restaurants, meeting rooms, offices, all sorts of stuff going on in here. This is the area to chill out and relax, do some of the interviews up here and stuff like that. And what's different about this place to the European races? Well, Jason, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Uh, we don't have the hospitality units that we normally do at European races. Uh, they bring those things across on massive trucks, they build them. They're incredible uh, structures, and yeah. you see them at all the races, but of course, um, Formula One's going into a green phase, uh, carbon neutrality and all of that, so it would be a waste of, of time, effort, and of course bad for the planet uh, if we transported those to every race. So at these flyaway races, as we term them, they're all purpose built. Yeah, at pretty much every track uh, in the world, uh, which gives the teams and the drivers really a beautiful home away from home. This is what I'm going to call the meaning of life part of this particular episode. Um, because we're going to go somewhere special. So come with me. I'm going to pretend to be Eric Gaiden. It's okay. Come on. Come on. Come on this way. Come on. Okay. This is kind of cool. This is where the drivers will all come after the race. They will have taken the same walk that we just did and they'll sit in here and they'll have their little bottles of water and they'll look at the times there and go, oh man, how are you so far ahead of me? And then when they put on their watches and everything and their caps, they come outside. So this is the view that they will have coming out here. Legions of fans in the grandstand. And here is the podium currently set up for the MRF challenge. But check it out, that is the Formula One podium looking out over the start finish straight here in Bahrain. And of course, every driver wants to end up right here, P1, winner of the race. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you get up there and show everybody what the view is for the race winner. So when Will decides he's finished with pretending to spray champagne up on the podium, I'm down here with an old friend, Martin Whitaker. He's a former CEO of Bahrain International Circuit, and uh, you were here when Bahrain made its debut on the Formula One calendar. But what was, whose idea was it to, to host a race here? Because it wasn't an obvious choice. Well, I think, first of all, Bernie was very keen to have a race in the Middle East. And in His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, he found a, a very willing supporter. And I think the most important thing to Bernie at the time was that uh, in the Crown Prince, he had somebody who was prepared to say, We'll have a race, we'll sign on the dotted line now, and what's more, we'll have the circuit made for you in 18 months. Having Formula One here in Bahrain, what has that done 
in terms of attracting other events? It's done a lot. I, I think most importantly it's raised the awareness and the profile of Bahrain on the, on the sporting stage and on the world stage. Yeah. Events are now coming here on the strength, I think, very much of the continuity and the performance of Formula One. He got a little bit too much wheel spin out of turn four and clattered into that set. Tell me, Jason. What? The rules and regulations of Giant Flag. Giant Flag, TM, um, was originated in 2006 on a journey from our hotel to the circuit. Where? Uh, here, here in Bahrain. Here in Bahrain. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because, as you know, there is a huge giant flag. A giant flag? Yeah, in the middle of the desert. So I first spotted it and I shouted at the top of my lungs, Giant Flag. And that got me thinking, how can I monetize this? Thus was born. The international game of giant flag. Giant flag. Which is a fairly simple game. You see a giant flag. If you shout giant flag before anybody else, you win a point. I love it. And it, the game lasts a year, but it can be shortened, you know, if you're not prepared to wait a year to see who wins. But essentially, you shout giant flag. It is my favorite travel game. Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar So Will, we're going to go to the souk. Cool. The old one. The old one? Yeah. Awesome. Here we go. Don't worry, I'll get the taxi. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, smell, incense. Yeah. Beautiful. I do love that smell. Reminds me of university. <laughs> <laughs> well, to cover up the other smells. Yeah. yeah. Wow, look at that. What? The very first vegetarian restaurant. <laughs> Ever? <laughs> well, <laughs> Paris. Pa oh, wow. <laughs> That's cool. That is so cool. That's the champions racer. Monkey shagging the monkey. <laughs> monkey tennis. It is our favourite restaurant in all of Bar. Evening. Evening. Thanks. Do you want a lamb and a chicken? No, I just want a chicken. Two chicken. Two chicken, two lamb. Two chicken, two lamb. Yeah. Two juice? Two yeah. juice. Mix. Yeah. Mix, please. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. I've been looking forward to this. Four months. Mate, me too. Mmm. God damn it, that ocean awesome sauce is good. Now, there are a lot of rules and regulations, and these rules and regulations have been written down by the International Giant Flag Organization. I.e. you. Yeah, me, because I invented it. There are a few controversial rules, but the basic rules are that the flag must be the size of a small two-bedroom terraced house. Minimum. Minimum. Bigger is fine, smaller can result in negative points. Yes. And the negative points are decided by me, the international arbiter of giant flag. Um, you can stake an appeal, but that needs to be... Um, in the form of a vodka and coke. No, 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 it needs to be supported with photographic evidence and dimensions. Ah, uh, yes, but, but is one of the rules of giant flag also the fact that... Um, that will not be able to claim giant flag by looking at a photograph. Exactly. It has to be in the flesh. But it can be used in, as supportive evidence oh, for okay. claim of giant flag. But if you take a picture of a giant flag and send it to me saying giant flag... You don't win. You don't win anything. You don't win squat. Do you get minus points for that? Uh, yeah, you do. Okay. Any, any failure of uh, a giant flag call results in a minus point. Okay. Now, if two people see the giant flag at the same time, and one and they both say giant flag at the same time, it comes down to who shouts it loudest. So that's about it from this first episode of, what do we call it? Off the Grid. Off, Off the, the Grid. grid. Yeah. Good name. Uh, so that's about it from the first episode of Off the Grid from uh, Jason and myself here in Bahrain. And what we like to do is after a long day at the track, we head to the karting track. 
Because I feel the need. No, don't go there. Um, so yes, it's a good night from me. And a good night from him. I'm going to kick you. I'm going to kick you so <laughs> no, hard. you're lost, man. <laughs> you're out of here. You're done, mate. You're done. A smooth driver is always the fastest driver. Try to be as smooth as possible with steering, braking, or accelerating. Here we go. Can we just turn the camera back on a second? So, um, you were doing, you did a racing driving thing, didn't you? Yes. With Ferrari? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I can see where this is going. Okay, yeah. And um, what happened in the karting? Well, this was like a night for everyone from NBC to go out and just have some fun. Okay. So, you know, I went out and ha I had some fun. Right, yeah, you? no, but what happened? What were the results? We all had a great time. Oh, yeah, we had a great time. We had the greatest time. Uh, what are you getting at? The, what, the, the One and a half seconds. Were you trying? Not really. You were, you were weren't you? You were pushing, because I wasn't. I was hanging back. Oh right, really? Okay. Yeah. I hung, I hung back to leave you the clear track. So oh, well, could... that's kind of you. Yeah. Should we have another go? Definitely. No? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you're such an Let's idiot. Let's do it. Come on. I can't believe you're getting it. This was supposed to be fun, man. It was. I had a great time. Let's go. <laughs> Giant flag! Jesus. <coughs> 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 that was <coughs> <you> right. <coughs> I think I burst a blood vessel. <laughs>